This is a 2024 Acura Integra Type S, the first true successor to the glorious third generation Acura Integra GSR and even to a certain extent the Type R. In effect, it is a four-wheeled bag of nostalgia for an entire generation of hot hatch lovers just like me. I loved the third generation Integra and it feels so good <laughs> to get behind the wheel of this thing. And yet, VTEC has been replaced by a turbocharger, a three-door option of the Integra just simply doesn't exist, and what's going on with all of these screens? We still live in the modern world after all. And all of what the modern world has to bring to the automotive market is here in this reborn Integra. So that's the question. In this modern reality of what cars are, does this Type S live up to the name, the idea, the ideal of what an Integra is? That's what I'm here to find out very happily, as you could guess. But first, let's talk about how much this car costs. The base price for a base Acura Integra is $32,695, but the base price for an Acura Integra Type S is $51,995. Yeah, a nearly 20 grand swing. It's not small. And my test car did have a special paint and a few accessories and cost $55,731. So speaking of all that, now is a good time for me to pull over and show you some of these accessories as well as go around and inside this car in a bit more detail. The wait is finally over. An Integra that truly reminds us of the good old days. A hot hatch with next level performance. At least visually. Let's take a closer look. From the front, yes, it looks like an Integra, but man, you can see right away that this is way more serious than the standard one that came out last year. First and foremost, we have this aluminum vented hood right here, and this vent allows 170% more cooling than a standard Integra. Not a bad start. We also have this visually louder front grille, and then it just goes lower and lower and lower with more aggression. We have this built-in small front spoiler here, this nice blacked out piece here on the side to allow more air into the sides of the car as well. And then a nice Type S badge right there. We have this nice Integra imprint into the body right here, and these pretty darn long and sharp looking headlights right here. Also, I don't know if you can see it, but the Integra Type S is 2.8 inches wider than a standard Integra. So there's a lot more just presence right when you look at this car right away. But as much fun as it is to talk about a vented hood, I'm sure you're much more interested, just like I am, to see what's underneath it. And here lies a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine that makes 320 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. It is transversely mounted or across side to side like this, of course. The center line of the front axle is right around here. So yes, most of the engine is in front of the front axle center line, but not too badly far from it. We also have this really interesting and large air intake right here that shoots right down to a big intercooler beneath the radiator. And then the turbocharger is loud and proud right in front of us right here as well. By the way, windshield washer fluid goes right here. In profile, this looks more like a standard Integra than it does in front, though there are certainly cues that you're looking at something special. Critically, you have these big fender flares in front right here. The front track is three and a half inches wider than a standard Integra, so these flare out big. And then in back, the flares aren't quite as big, but they're still pretty pronounced. You have 1.9 inches extra track width in back. So there's just more width and more stability baked into the footprint of the Type S of the Integra. Also, you can see this bodywork just goes way down low down here, right at the base of the rockers. And then more of that comes into the rear right here. You also get a look at this $950 rear spoiler. I'll show you that just a bit more in a moment. And I do quite like this platinum white pearl paint that this particular Type S is painted in. This is a $600 optional color, but does look an awful lot like championship white that 
the Civic Type R and the Integra Type R from back in the day was painted in. A good choice, I'd say. Also, I think the black window trim and the black around the side view mirror covers is a good contrast to the white paint. And of course, you got to let everyone know that it's a Type S right on the front fender here. I will go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen so you can check that out. This is two tenths of an inch longer than a standard Integra, by the way, and let you know that I have a lot more information in the description. The Integra Type S gets lightweight 19 inch wheels on it as standard, but if you go with this pretty epic looking copper finish, that is an additional $2,186, not cheap, but behind those wheels are four piston Brembo calipers and a 13.8 inch rotor, nice healthy sizes. And this is a wider than the standard Integra wheel, a 265 millimeter section width slash 30ZR 19 inch tire. And it is a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, a very good high performance summer tire. And in back, you get the same tire, same size, but it is a 12 inch rotor and a single piston floating caliper, but it's still red. In back, more of the same elements exist to let you know that this is not a standard Integra. This particular piece right here, this is a carbon fiber rear spoiler, and this is a $950 option. And I have to say, looks quite good. I like the fact that this spoiler is tasteful. It's not overwrought. It doesn't come up eight inches like this or look like it's off of a GT3 car. I think it fits the performance level of this car well. And I do like this black here to go with this like faux diffuser shape. And I do quite like that we have a very similar to the Civic Type R tri-tip exhaust down here. But this is actually a unique exhaust. We do get five more horsepower than the Civic Type R and this high flow exhaust has something to do with it. I'll talk about that just a little bit more in a minute. But generally, I think just like the front of the car, the rear of the Integra Type S fits the additional performance you get compared to the average Integra. Yes, this is a hatchback. So you do get hatchback cargo. 24 cubic feet of space behind the second row in the Integra Type S, pretty fitting. The loading floor is actually quite high, but that sinks down a good eight, 10 inches to the floor. So there's a lot more space underneath that. Also on the driver's side, you do have this netted off area for some additional space. On the passenger side is a subwoofer for the stereo system. And if you need more than 24 cubic feet of storage and don't have to carry anybody in back, that is easy to do. And with a couple pulls of a lever, you have more than 24 cubic feet of storage. And I do think enough room for my bike, but I don't think it's gonna be the easiest to get in and out. Let's find out. Oh yeah, high loading floor. Oh, and not terribly high hatch, not terribly wide. Uh, come on, that's narrow there. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a squeeze especially this pinch point right here between the second row and the cargo space. But my road bike does fit, barely. All right, let's check out the inside. This is a five door, but only four seat car. There is no seat belt in the center, but check it out. You get cup holders as a result right there. Hey, hey, hey. Seat bottom doesn't look too terribly high, but it's probably comfortable enough. I am five foot 11 inches or 181 centimeters tall. And I've got, you know, good three inches of knee room right there. The seat bottoms are indeed a touch on the low side. So I do not have that much thigh support, but it's not bad. And I do have less than a 90 degree bend in my knees. The red interior looks nice and I could do short trips in here if I needed to, but I definitely wouldn't want to, but Hey, you'd manage compared to the second row. It is an absolute palace up here. Plenty of space, but also really comfortable seats. Look at this faux suede we have right here. Type S in Boston, the headrest. And look at these nice and deep bolsters up here and down here. So these are really nice supportive seats. Now, 
the passenger seat is manually adjusted, but the driver's seat does have electric controls right here, as well as lumbar support. So it's easy to get just the right fitting as well. And check it out, one, two, three pedals down there. Definitely a good thing. We also get a nice metallic type S kick plate right there. Your track control on off is to the left of the steering wheel. And you do have the typical controls on the door right there. The steering wheel has a real nice thick rim on it and a nice type S logo down there. And you do have cruise control options here and media control options right there on the wheel. You also have a 10.2 inch fully digital instrument cluster screen right there. However, there are a few indicators and things outside of that digital screen on either side. So when it's lit up, you'll see that it actually extends the full perimeter of this space right here. You also get a nine inch center console touchscreen right here. And you have generally cool styling, I think, you know, this is an extension of what we've seen since the new 11th generation base Civic sedan came out with this like kind of grid pattern with the vents baked into it. And you do have more of that on either side. And you have this nice cool looking material right here. And then some nice red leather going into the dash. But of course, six speed manual transmission right there. A nice type S logo just at the base. And ahead of it, we do have a Qi wireless phone charger right there, as well as two USB ports, one type A, one type C, and a 12 volt port right there. To the left of all that, push button start. And there is the instrument cluster screen all lit up. And as you can see, the fuel gauge and the coolant temp, as well as some warning lights, that is not included in the 10.2 inch screen right here in the center, but the gauges are. And there is your nine inch center console touchscreen lit up as well. You also have a head up display, so plenty of screens. The nine inch center console touchscreen does include a lot of the usual things, but it also includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's really nice to know. Beneath that, we have standard heated seats for the front passenger, standard dual zone climate control. I also already showed you the wireless smartphone charger. That's also standard. Beneath that, we have a couple of nice deep cup holders and some lower center console storage right here. And it goes pretty deep as well. Looking up, we have the light controls and a glasses holder. And that's it, no moonroof or anything. And that makes me happy because that's more headroom for if you're wearing a helmet and lighter weight as well. So for me, for the driver enthusiast in me, that is welcome. Okay, let's talk drive modes. You get a few of them. You get comfort, sport, and sport plus. And you do also have adaptive shock absorbers in this car. So that doesn't just affect powertrain and steering weight, that does affect real handling characteristics in the car. So that will bring real changes into the attitude of this car, which is kind of cool to see. And you also have this button right here. That's another drive mode. Touch it and you're in the individual drive mode. Hold it down and this shows you what you can customize in the individual drive mode. Anyway, this engine and myself has been sitting idly for way too long. Let's get back to the drive. Okay, let's dig into the powertrain. How did Acura get 320 horsepower out of this turbocharged two liter? Well, first of all, they got it at about 6,500 RPM, which is about 500 RPM shy of the red line. And second, this does have a unique exhaust system. It is an active valve exhaust system on the Integra Type S. So Acura engineers took that and combined that with some additional software tuning to be able to eke out an additional five horsepower compared to the Honda Civic Type R. Pretty sweet. And I think very welcome. The Acura should be above the Honda in horsepower, even if it is just by a small percentage. Now, peak torque is the same at 310 pound feet. And you get that between 2600 and 4000 RPM, which is a nice little range to work with. This engine does also have direct fuel injection and a single mass lightweight flywheel is attached to it, which helps the engine spin up and down just a little bit faster. Appreciate it. And of course, a clutch is also attached to this flywheel because this is exclusively a six-speed manual transmission. 
and Honda are absolutely among the very top at manual transmissions. They work smoothly, they work quickly, they have a light feel, short throws. I'm very, very happy with it. You also get a standard helical type limited slip differential to help distribute power to the front axle. That's very helpful, especially when you're exiting out of corners. For a front wheel drive car, this is about as good as you can do in terms of powertrain, in terms of driver enthusiast friendly powertrain. I mentioned that we have an active valve exhaust. Well, Honda does play with the engine sound when you're in different drive modes, but it doesn't sound like they lean as heavily on the using the stereo system to take out different frequencies and add certain frequencies to change the tone as much as they're using actual mechanical bits, the active valve exhaust to change the tone and the attitude of the exhaust. So right now we're in third gear and in the comfort driving mode and if I floor it, <laughs> you get good pull and I would say a pretty darn decent sound from the exhaust as well. Now let's switch to sport, same thing. <laughs> uh, well, the, the pull does not get hold, I'll tell you that much. And that did sound a little throatier, a little louder. Okay, now, Sport Plus. Oh yeah, a distinctly different sound. <laughs> and in Sport Plus, you will get some big pops and some overrun fun from the exhaust as well. So. Can you hear that? It's in the background, it's a little subtle, but there's some cool just like pops and hisses from the exhaust to just help you hear how alive this car is and like bring you into the experience just more often. Now down to second gear, pin the throttle. <laughs> yeah, just good strong pull, nice high revs and nice, nice speed. Now it's not the 8,000 RPM awesomeness of the VTEC days of yore, but you get a lot more pull than you did back then too. So I think it's a reasonable compromise at the end of the day. Now, a little bit more technology is in here. You do have auto rev matching. I'm not doing any of this rev matching here. That's all the computer. That's not something I'm the biggest fan of, but it's pretty common these days. And I'll tell you what, I'll take it. If it means I get a manual transmission, I'll happily take it. When you're dealing with an exhaust that has an active valve and can do things like give you some extra pops and hisses to listen to as you're revving through the gears, it's probably not gonna be the most fuel efficient thing in the world, is it? And here, it's definitely the case. You get 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 28 miles to the gallon on the highway, 24 combined. Not bad, but you know, this day and age for a car this size, pretty low on the totem pole. And while fuel economy is important, I can guarantee you, especially in something like this, accelerating is way, way more fun. Of course I had to test it. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test in this Acura Integra Type S. I do have it in the Sport Plus driving mode and I do have traction control reduced. Let's see how it goes. All right, coming to a complete stop about 3,000 revs. Nice little pops from the exhaust. Oh, nice! <laughs> nice! Good, good, good! 7,000 revs from this 2-liter turbocharged engine and what pull and muscle! Oh, man! That is glorious! 320 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, go to work. And this is a fantastic, quick-shifting six-speed, so it makes all that work easy. And yeah, pretty good launch, too. Yeah, it's quick, this Integra Type S, isn't it? Of course, a car like this, anything these days with a Type S as part of its name, you have to know how well it handles. And this car takes a lot of serious steps to be a good handler. I showed you that it has a much wider front and wider rear track. It's also got the adaptive shock absorbers, a bigger front anti-roll bar, stickier tires, not to mention that same super slick dual access front suspension system in the Honda Civic Type R. That system virtually eliminates torque steer in a front wheel drive car. 
And for a car with this much power to not feel any torque steer is really impressive. But there's a flip side. This thing has 62% of its weight up front. <laughs> yeah, that's not an insignificant amount. So yeah, of course I wanted to see how well this car handles. It's a huge part of what an Integra is. So let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for a handling test in the Integra Type S. I do, of course, have it in Sport Plus driving mode, and I do, once again, have traction control reduced. See what that gives us. <laughs> good engine, definitely good engine. Good grip. Not much turn. <laughs> I didn't need much turn lock to get the car turned. We have a nice fast ratio, good front end response. Yeah, good start. <laughs> Impressive grip in this thing, yeah. Yeah, we're hustling through these corners and the car feels stable, very little body motion, all very good. Tracking really well, very precise, very little understeer. Whew. Yeah, car stayed planted through those little whoops in the road, no problem. Plenty of grip. <laughs> Man, yeah, this is sports car level grip here, no doubt. <laughs> Even through that super tight right, we did not get much understeer. We got a little bit. It was definitely understeer at the limit, but it's pretty darn good chassis balance. Considering how much weight is on this front end, it's actually superb chassis balance. And we have a nice fast steering ratio to work with. We have good body control, good front end response, and it's really easy to feel the limit. I think that is a very underappreciated bit here. It's not what the limit is as much as how easy is it to feel that limit. And man, the Integra is just among the very best at that. And I just so deeply appreciate that because you can just have more confidence when you're going through roads and driving and just more confidence means more fun. Fantastic handling car. Maybe, maybe even better than the Civic Type R. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up, honestly. That was a great, great experience. But of course, even something as aggressive as this will have to spend some time just doing some normal driving, and that bears the question. How comfortable is it? How is the ride? Well, I don't think it's gonna come as a surprise. This thing is definitely on the stiff side. Even in the comfort driving mode, you get jostled around a decent amount. We have pretty stiff springs after all, and that big front anti-roll bar I just talked about. But in my opinion, it's perfectly fine plenty compliant to get through, you know, commuting and whatever everyday chores you have, and, you know, reasonably comfortable and quiet as well. And of course, that's true on roads like this or on the interstate. I did test it there as well. Let me show you that. All right, everybody, time for a quick stint on the interstate. See how this Integra Type S feels on more normal, more mundane roads. Real quick before we get moving, I wanna show you the steering wheel and the instrument cluster. Here's the steering wheel. On the right side are your cruise control controls, cruise control, this is distance control, and this is lane keeping assist right here. So that's what I'll be using. We do not have any kind of fancy three lane view of what the car sees on the road or anything like that. But, you know, we do have a windshield, so that'll work for me. All right, let's get moving. Time for the quick stint on the interstate. I do have the car back in the comfort driving mode and I do have traction control fully on again. I also have a suite of advanced driver assistance systems. Acura calls it Acura Watch. I'll go ahead and put those up on the screen right now so you can check those out. The Integra Type S is a tiny touch lighter than some other Acura models when it comes to that kind of equipment, but not by much. It's largely the same thing you'd get on any Acura. Okay, cruise control is set. We're going 76 miles an hour to go with the flow of traffic. I've got it on the minimum range and I do not have lane keep assist on yet. 
but now I do. And I am going through a subtle curve, so I'll take my hands off the wheel. And yeah, we're tracking around the curve pretty well, just like any other Integra, although slightly bumpier. And I was wrong. The digital instrument cluster actually does give some information so you can see what the car sees. Let me show you that right now. It's not the three lane fanciness that some cars have these days, but it is definitely something that gives you a good sense of what the Acura thinks the lanes are and what the Acura thinks in terms of traffic around you. So you do almost pretty much do get the three lanes, just a smaller version. Okay, at this speed, at 75 miles an hour that we're traveling right now, we are in sixth gear and the engine is spinning right around 27, 28, 100 RPM. So it's not the quietest thing in the world and obviously not the most fuel efficient either, as you already saw. But if you're getting a car like this, I don't think that's going to be a huge factor for you. It's not for me. Also, even in the comfort driving mode, this is a pretty stiff ride. The adaptive shock absorbers can only do so much. You've got a pretty heavy spring rate, bigger anti-roll bars, etc., etc., etc. And wind noise is actually pretty darn good. This is isolating the cabin pretty well from wind noise. I don't hear any buffeting or anything like that. And more good news, the seats are not only nice and supportive when you're going through corners, they are also very comfortable when you're just driving along. That's one of the side benefits of having these really nice supportive sporty seats is you feel kind of held in place and supported in any type of driving, not just swift going around corners, high lateral G driving. So I really appreciate that. Plus. The instrument cluster screen is easy to read, even though that little screen of the lanes and what's going on there is small, it's still easy enough to see. And uh, the center console touchscreen is also big enough to use as well, even though it's not as widescreen as some other things out there these days. So yeah, all in all, this is a perfectly reasonable road trip car. What do we think of this big bag of rolling nostalgia? Does the Integra Type S live up to the glorious, so, so good, so, so memorable third generation Integra GSR and Type R. In a word, yeah, given everything that's happened since the last Integra left us and this Integra has come in terms of safety requirements and just the market as a whole, the fact that Acura was able to retain as much of the character that it did from the third generation car is absolutely laudable. And this car has tons of power, decent amount of comfort, and I think the same spirit as that third generation car. It follows basically the same mold. You take the Honda Civic, you refine it just a little bit, and you sharpen it just a little bit. The sticking point is, of course, the price, because this isn't Honda Civic plus the little bit, is it? 52 grand, oh, that's tough to swallow at first. But then you get behind the wheel and the experience of driving this thing, especially driving it quickly, is truly fantastic. And these days more than ever, that is pretty much priceless. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so helps me out quite a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I did get a chance to drive the Honda Civic Type R, and I did it at a racetrack. I got to do some laps in that thing, and you know, that thing is pretty darn good. I have to say, I didn't feel five fewer horsepower in that circumstance, just to be honest. So I definitely think that is worth checking out. Also, I've got a new website. It's called viewsonvehicles.com, and there I have a lot of new car news and car reviews for you to check out, and I definitely hope you can and do. And I've reviewed a whole bunch of stuff by now. Something's gonna pop up on the screen next to me. Hopefully it's something you are interested in, and if you do end up watching it, I definitely hope you like it. Okay, goodbye for now. Oh, <laughs> yes!